Happy Wednesday, ladies. How are you? It is our regular training, Wednesday training, our live training. So today we are talking all about plants and plant protein because this is something that I hear often from people or I read about or I hear online people saying and so I'm going to really just um, bust the myths that are um, or beliefs and the myths that people think are hey Sandra I'm gonna bust them because uh, what sometimes you know when we're educated and we realize what actually we're missing um, it changes everything and it changes how we think and what we think and so that's what we're gonna talk about today so we're gonna talk about where the heck do I get my protein from when I'm eating plants and if I'm not eating meat where am I gonna get it and um, so if you're joining me live please say hello in the comments if you're joining by replay, put hashtag replay, and I wanna know from you ladies what you're taking away. Because sometimes I don't know, you know, I, uh, I will come up with topics that I hear often or maybe someone's asked me, um, but I wanna know that you're able to take, you're taking away um, information, that you're receiving value. So please in the comments, let me know something that you didn't know before of course when I bring it up let me know what your hey Tina let me know what um, questions you have and then I will um, do my best to answer them and I will also come in um, if afterwards for those of you listening by replay I will answer those questions as well so um, you have to have questions you always have to have questions so asking there's never a stupid question there is never a stupid question. And so I know when I was younger, I never wanted to ask any questions because I thought my questions were stupid. And um, it wasn't until I was in my early 40s that I was able to get over that, but it took that, that many years. So there's never a stupid question. It's always about learning. And um, so just make sure you ask. So where do you get your protein when it comes from plants? So there is so much misconception out there. We have been taught over years and years and years. I grew up eating meat. Um, I'm a plant-based now. Does it mean that I'll never touch meat? Not necessarily, but I have no desire to eat it. I never really have. That's the kind of person that I am. I just, I crave more plant-based foods. Now, my son um, made this um, taco thing yesterday and it was with ground beef. So of course I, I get him quality meat. And um, I had a couple bites because it was so darn delicious. <laughs> Would I want to eat a whole thing? I was, and I wouldn't though, but that's me, right? So you've always got to start with where you're at. Don't feel bad. Don't listen to all the other stuff that you hear out there that you have to eat meat to get your protein or that you shouldn't eat meat. Don't listen to all that stuff. Do what feels good for your body, right? So um, just to kind of give you a background is when I went through, when, when I... Yeah, when I went through holistic nutrition school, um, this was, I think, 15 years ago, um, I started learning more about um, plants and, you know, all the stuff that we learn in, in nutrition school. And, and I just knew in my heart, I said, you know what, we need to cut down our meat because we would eat meat every day because that's what we knew, right? My husband comes from a Jamaican family. They eat rice and peas and chicken and rice and peas and goat and rice and peas and whatever. It was a lot of rice and peas and meat. And so that's what he knew as well. And so I just felt in my, in my gut that we needed to reduce the consumption of meat that we ate. And I believe for everybody, I do believe for everybody that it's, it's a good thing to reduce our consumption, that it's actually a good thing to, um, you know, have a plant-based meal, like for lunch, maybe you have your plant-based meal then, and maybe you have a meat dish at dinner right? Or maybe you're going full. I, so that's what we did. And we cut down, we were, I, I called us flexitarians. Um, and then when, um, I didn't feed my daughter, when my daughter was born 18 years ago, I didn't feed her any meat until she was two. But then I knew when I was going to start feeding her meat, I knew that I didn't want to feed her conventional meat because conventional meat is full of hormones. It's full of chemicals. It's full of, um, drugs. It's just, 
it, we are made up of what we put in our body. So then that's what I did with her and people thought it was crazy. Like 18 years ago, that was, now would be like, okay, it makes sense. But 18 years ago, it was like I was walking down my own path and um, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I do things differently than what the majority of people do because it's always served me. Um, so then uh, then what I had decided was um, I, yeah, I thought, you know what? I did this many years ago. I decided that I was going to do um, 30 days of plant-based or vegetarian, because at the time plant-based wasn't really a term, but vegetarian. So we didn't eat any meat. Now, I don't now eat anything with a face or a mother. Um, you know, like I, I wouldn't say I'm vegetarian because I don't um, typically eat cheese. However, it doesn't mean I won't. Like there's occasional times I will add fet, um, like maybe feta um, from goat or sheep. I'll add goat's cheese just because something different, just because I like it in salads, but it's not a regular thing, right? So. Um, and then equality is always key. So I basically um, was living that way and then my family was as well. And so I noticed changes when I would eat fully plant-based. And um, anyway, so now because of my husband last year, um, he went, we watched the movie Game Changers. And if you've never seen the movie Game Changers, you need to write that down and you need to watch the movie. You cannot um, dispute what these doctors are sharing in the movie. You just can't. It's, it's factual science. Now, I don't need, me personally, you might be different, I don't need science to confirm that I need to eat more fruits, vegetables, berries, and all. I don't need that. I, I know what it does. Like I don't need science to tell me what it's gonna do in my immune system, but it's there if we need it, and it's, and it's great that we have that science to back it up. So anyways, you cannot dispute what you see there. It's pretty amazing. And so that was a shift that he took um, and that was huge because he was like fully meat. And he, and from doing this now for a year and a half, he's lost 30 pounds of inflammation. Now my husband's not a big guy. Like he's, um, he's like just under six feet, but he's like very muscular. He's a football player in university and you know, sports guy and that sort of thing. But he's not like, he's not a skinny guy. He's got muscle, right? Um, and so um, he lost 30 and he's like, I didn't even know I needed to lose 30 pounds of inflammation, but he is trim. Like he even um, can wear my son, <laughs> my son's t-shirts that my, and my son's a tall, tall kid, but he's not a big, big, big kid. So he can even wear his t-shirts and um, pants. I'm not so sure about pants, but anyway, so you get the, the idea. So l just really the biggest thing is, and where I come from is, you know, I don't say I, I don't say I'm a plant-based nutritionist because I believe people have to kind of work it, work their, their stuff out, right? I believe people have to really come from where they're at that I don't want to say you should do this or should do, I, I do believe though we need to eat more plants. And so I want to share with you, you know, this common um, misconception that when you eat a plant base, you're not getting protein because that's not true. And I'm gonna show you some stuff. I did put, I took pictures of stuff that I printed out. I've had this for a long time um, and I use it all the time. Um, but I put these pictures and we'll go over it in the group so you can see them. But when you really break it down, you start to realize, wow, I had no idea that a cup of lentils, which a cup of lentils would be probably, I would have about a, maybe a cup cooked lentils maybe, yeah. Um, that's like 18 grams of protein. That's good, right? We don't need 25, like, you know, when we talk about, say, the RDA, um, Colin Campbell is um, a, a, someone who wrote the book called um, China Study. He has other ones too, but the China Study. And he actually is big on the plant-based movement. And so in Game Changers, they do reference Colin Campbell. Colin Campbell actually has his own online school um, that I'm considering going to at some point um, in the future. And that is the plant-based nutrition school. And um, they specifically teach on plant-based, very a lot of different things than what I was even taught in nutrition school. And he talks about how the RDA of protein is greatly overestimated. That, so typically, now, as a holistic nutritionist, I don't teach you to count calories. I don't teach you to make sure that you have 25 grams of protein and this grams of carb. Like, I don't work that way. I just 
Um, yes, look at portion sizes because depending on the person, we need that. Say hello, ladies. Hi, Tara. Hi, Sherry. Um, and uh, but we we have to understand that we can get pro, pro all food contains protein. All food it does not have to come from just meat. Okay, so. Um, one of the things is, as all of us growing up, we have grown up in, an, in a world in, or in a society where the meat companies and the dairy farmers, um, or the meat, the meat farmers, I guess, um, animal farm, they're all pushing their agenda in terms of, you know, that this is what we need to get to, you know, eat to have our protein. This is what we're taught. So it's no wonder that everyone thinks this because this is what we're taught. And I even had to, coming into the plant-based world, I even had to shift my belief system. I did. And, um, and so that's why I like to see the, now this is where I like to see the research, especially when it's my belief system. Because if I can see research and I can see testimonials of other people, athletes, that are, are not wasting away and are not skinny, skinny, skinny. So when you watch Game Changers, the first thing I said was, well, and now I'm still open though, regardless of me saying this. I said, but these people, most people, because they're skinny, you know, like runners, they can be really thin and lean and they don't look, help. not just runners, I'm saying sometimes thin people, you know, that you, you, we stereotype as plant-based or vegetarian or vegan, they're skinny and, and, and most people don't want to be that or they don't see that as healthy, right, as looking healthy. And I said, but look at all these people in this movie, they're showcasing all of this, but they did that on purpose. And then you get into this, um, the strongest man in the world, I can't remember his name at the, at the moment, but you look at him, you would never think that he's fully plant-based, never. He's this huge guy. Um, and you know, Arnold, Sch Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I could list so many different people that are bodybuilders and are athletes. And these athletes, I mean, athletes are in a whole different um, center of the population because they're not just everyday people like us, they are training and their bodies need max nutrition. And this is why I talk about, um, you know, the juice plus and the red, the green and the berry um, so much lately is because we are not getting enough of the nutrition that we need in our food, in the, in the food we're eating, even if you're eating well. We just can't anymore because of our soil and because of all the things I've talked about before. And so um, the micronutrition, so that's why I talk so much about this because our body needs to repair. All of us, ladies, all of you listening, and those of you listening on, rec on recording, we know, it is a fact, okay? So we know, it's a fact, that we are all on the go, okay? How many of you end up staying up later than 12 o'clock in the, in, the, in the evening? How many of us are, um, you know, running, maybe running a business, working a job, ha have kids, you have to do, get your own personal time, um, you know, some of you, um, like Tara, you and I teaching classes, although you're probably doing more of that now than I am. I just do one virtual class, um, at a location. So all these things that is stress on the body. Plus, if you're living with a health condition or whatever it might be, your body, you, we are asking a lot of our body. And unfortunately, nowadays we are not getting what we need to replenish what our body is needing to heal. So basically, um, what I'm saying is we need that micronutrition. Yes, too many things. Absolutely, Tara, too many things. And guess what happens, ladies? You guys have heard me talk about this before when I talk about stress. I'm getting to the protein in a second, but I'm feeling I'm just kind of going with the flow here. Um, I am getting to the protein, so stick with me. Um, and don't sleep enough. Yes, thank you, Tara. Thank you for saying this because you are not the only one. You are not the only one. And I will tell you because of how the body works and how we're in fight or flight so much. I can even tell you that since I don't, um, I work out and I do all things, I have not been doing as much of my own yoga practice as is what I used to when I was teaching and all the things. Um, and then I do my workouts, but even my workouts that I'm doing weight training and I am doing like 10 minute um, uh, stretch and, and that sort of thing, I notice, and also I'm at the computer more than when I was out and about, and I notice that I'm carrying much more stress up here than I ever used to. I have to I'm using hot water bottles on my neck most of the time, and deep blue. I never had to do that before, plus not being in a hot yoga room really has affected me in terms of not getting the heat. 
because I, I was in like twice a week and a huge difference, huge difference. But as you get older, me being 46, I have noticed that also because as we're getting older, ladies, we're decaying. Our bodies are dying. That's what happens. You know that, right? So this is why we've got to amp up our nutrition. We need protein. Protein is a macronutrient, carbohydrate, fat, and protein are macronutrients. The micronutrients is what I call the juice plus or um, say when we take Selenda, we're getting the minerals, right? The minerals are what we're lacking. Our bodies need that. We need the macros, but we do need the micros. And so if your digestion is not on par and you've got some dysbiosis happening, then you're not even digesting your food and, and absorbing the nutrients like you, your body needs to, right? So we've got that issue. So um, this is why also with the Juice Plus I love so much is because it's 30 plus fruits, vegetables, and berries that we're getting every day, twice a day. When are you eating Brussels sprouts twice a day? You're not, right? And think about what cruciferous vegetables do in your body. Look, think about what they do in your body. They are um, helping to fight cancer. They are helping to pull bad estrogens out of your body. And not only that, all three of those are helping your liver function optimally. So when your liver is functioning optimally, it can now filter out those bad estrogens through your liver. But if your liver is not functioning optimally, then it, it, everything starts to back up and get congested, okay? So sleep is also going to help repair us. If we're not sleeping well, we're not repairing. Okay, so there's a lot of pieces. So when we talk about protein, um, like I said, Colin Campbell talks about how the RDA is overly, grossly overestimated. Okay, so typically how you would get your protein needs, okay, I'm not saying that you need to do this. I'm just kind of telling you what, how it works. So I weigh 127 pounds. I would times that, multiply that by 0 0.36, and that gives me 46 grams of protein a day. Okay, now I am not going to each meal and I'm not measuring that out. I don't even teach my people to do that. Unless you're in metabolic reset, you are doing something totally different and we're doing that for a period of time. Okay, that is resetting you. That is reducing inflammation. That's doing all of, right? It's, that's not forever, right? Um, we're not, all of that stuff. So um, plants, so hold on, I've got a lot of notes here and I don't want to um, jump all over the place because then I'll get lost. So plants provide protein in the form of individual amino acids, which the body digests and utilizes better over complex proteins. Complex proteins would be the proteins coming from meat or an animal source, okay? Whereas um, individual amino acids are coming from plants. And so humans actually need to get nine essential amino acids. They are essential because our body can't digest or can't um, produce them, right? Just like our, um, um, uh, what is it? The um, uh, fats, the essential fats are also essential because our body doesn't make them, okay? So, um, so plants, okay, are, so our body, our bodies don't make them, so we need to get them. Okay, I'm just making sure I don't miss anything in my notes. So plants that are low, because as you can see, if I don't go by my notes, I just start talking, and then I gotta reel myself back into what we're talking about. But it all it all comprises in together, so it all works out. But So plants that are low in protein, combined with other plants that are higher, they balance each other out. So when you combine them, what happens is you have a number of um, the amount of proteins that you need, okay? And I'm gonna share some stuff with you in the book that I have. So the important thing is, is that we wanna make sure we have a variety of, not just greens, I talked about greens, I think it was last week. You wanna make sure that you have um, a, lots of greens in your diet, okay? So you're making kale, you're, uh, you're using um, Swiss chard, spinach, all of these different sources, okay? Because greens have substantial amounts of protein. They really should be their own food group, okay? Um, and it, that protein, not only the protein, but the micronutrition you're gonna get and the minerals you're gonna get and the alkalizing you're gonna get, all of that you're gonna get from the greens is gonna help so many areas of your body. So the reason why I like, you know, um, anything that's broken down where, cause you need to chew, 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 chew. If you're not chewing enough, 
you're not gonna break down because the fibers are quite dense. This is why sauteing or steaming is very good because your gut doesn't have to do as much work. Um, mixing that with raw and, um, you know, raw and steamed. So it, it's also about what's going on in your gut health too. So one pound of kale, listen to this, one pound of kale has even more protein than is recommended by the USDA per day. And I would say that for Canada as well. We'll just say we're one in the same. One pound of kale has more protein than what is recommended. Does anyone know that? No, of course not, because that's not what we're taught. That's what I teach though, because if someone doesn't teach it, nobody's gonna know. And so I'm just gonna teach the things that are gonna support us and help us. Okay, so I have page 43. So I have a chart here, okay? And this is actually in Green for Life. Okay, so she specifically, Victoria Bachenko is specifically talking about greens. Um, that's okay because it still applies to us. So listen to this. Okay, listen to this. The amino acids, okay, the average, okay, this is lamb's quarters. Lamb's quarters is a weed that you can eat, okay? I just want you to see this, okay? This is, we're talking about what the average adult needs in these amino acids. Okay, I'm just gonna give you a couple here. Histidine is amino acid that we need, and an average adult needs 560 grams. Okay, lamb's quarter in a pound, raw, 527 grams. Almost what we are, what we need in amino acid, right? Amino acid is what protein breaks down into and that our body utilizes to repair, build muscle, right? Protein is important for the immune system. It's important for so many things. Isoleucine, okay, listen to this. The average adult needs per day 700 milligrams per day. Lamb's quarters, the edible weed, has 1,149 milligrams, okay? Uh, tryptophan, right? We all know tryptophan is in Turkey. That actually helps to calm us. The average adult, adult needs 245. Lamb's quarters has 173, almost what we need. So you kind of get the idea here, right? Um, and then in kale, okay, so listen to kale. So iso, iso, isoleucine, which an average adult needs 700 milligrams a day. Kale is 895. Um, valine, amino acid, 700 milligrams a day. Kale, 820. 309, adult, 490 a day. And kale, 668. So you see, the, see what I'm saying here is, is that kale is, is, is such a huge importance to our everyday. Now, um, you know, you may have heard of eating raw kale as being, is not good for your, um, you know, if you have thyroid issues or, but you have to eat a lot of kale, a lot of kale, which you are not going to do to have that affect your thyroid negatively. Um, so let me just um, read something to you, okay? This is the difference between complex proteins, like I said, the meat versus individual aminos, okay? Like what I said earlier, okay? I want you to listen to this. Imagine that you have to make a wedding dress for your daughter or somebody. Consuming the complex proteins that we get from cows or other creatures is like going to the secondhand store and buying many other people's used dresses, coming home and spending several hours ripping apart pieces of the dresses that you like and combining them into a new dress for your daughter. This alternative will take a lot of time and energy and will leave a great deal of garbage. You could never make a perfect dress that way. I'm gonna go on there in a second for the um, consuming of individual aminos. When we're eating animal-based protein, what happens is, is we look at it as more of a, not a clean burning source, okay? So when we look at individual amino acids or plant-based protein, plant-based protein is um, protein that is a clean burning fuel. So we're not going to get the acid waste like we would if, or the energy that, you, the energy required for your body to digest meat protein is a lot of energy. 
And that energy is being sucked out of you to digest. I mean, how many of you, if you've ever done, uh, like I know my husband, he would fall asleep at night all the time. And like really quickly, um, and also on the couch, he might fall asleep and then whatever, you know, like what is normal for most people. When he went at plant-based, he wasn't having a nap in the middle of the day. Like he could sit in the car and he'd just put his head down and have a nap. He could sleep anywhere. It was extremely annoying. Anywhere. So we would go into the store, the mall, whatever, and he'd be like, oh, I'm just going to stay here and have a nap. Like anywhere. And guess what, guys? Now that he's plant-based, he does not nap anywhere. He doesn't do that anymore because his arteries are clear. His um, blood pressure has cleared. I mean, we've done over the years, because his thing was high blood pressure. When he was diagnosed at 26, when I met him, he was diagnosed with high blood pressure and he's 51 now. And his blood pressure is like, I'm talking like um, with, with the reason why he went plant-based. I mean, think about it. Most people think that we are, how can, how can he have this dangerous high blood pressure when you guys are so healthy? But this is the thing is there's always work to be done. We would get lax and say, oh, we'll just have the meat. Like, you know, we would just have the, the meat dish tonight and instead of having like, you know, put all the, the, what is it, the sprouts and all the things. Like, you know, we get, we get in our comfort zone and we get lazy, right? Lazy, I'm not saying that in a, in a you know, like a harmful way in any means, if that's the right word I wanna use. But do you know what I mean? So now, like he is on point with his, like, I could probably get him to come on here and teach. Like, he's just on point. Sometimes even better than me. Like, how he, all is all of the things. So, I'm saying that because he is not, he has energy. He's not tired. His arteries aren't blocked. And when you see game changers and you see, um, he's walking proof of what those studies are showing. Um... Okay, so let me finish this. So consuming individual amino acids is like taking your daughter to a fabric store to buy beautiful new fabric, lace, buttons, ribbons, threads, pearls. With these essential elements, you make a beautiful dress that fits her unique body perfectly. Similarly, when you eat greens, you um, purchase new amino acids, freshly made by sunshine and chlorophyll, which the body will use to rebuild its parts according to your own unique DNA. Now, I'm not just talking about greens here, I'm talking about plants in general, right? But she's specifically talking about greens. Um, your body has to work harder to break down the complex, okay? And it's stealing, stealing energy from you. So, um, so, okay, let me go now to page 44. Oh, I read that already, okay. All right, so, when you are deficient in amino acids, your body will experience, can experience depression, lack of energy, ADD, lack of focus, cravings. Think about our kids. Think about children and how much ADD, ADHD, and all of the behavior stuff that is diagnosed nowadays. When I was in school, there was none of that. The food back then was much better quality. Let's just talk about the food in general. Our kids are not getting the protein that they need. They're not getting the micronutrition that they need. I could probably just do a talk on kids' health. Um, they're craving, they want sugar more. They want carbohydrates more, which is going to impact their insulin and blood sugar, which then as they get older, then they're set up for diabetes, pre-diabetes. You know how much pre-diabetes I see with women coming to me and men? And diabetes, like it's more than it ever has before. I remember, I think it was five year, five or ten years ago, I remember um, hearing a doctor say um, at a lecture I was at, he said that in another 10 to 15 years, we will have a hard time actually um, like get, getting insulin to people. And you know what, guys? 97% of it, honestly, 97% of it, it goes back to what we're putting in our bodies. And it's, yes, it is effort and it is work and it is change, but our health is worth it. Your health is worth the investment. Your health is worth the $100 that you pay a month for Juice Plus. And those of you with me that use Juice Plus and Celanda Enrique, like that's a couple hundred, but 
And then the food that, or the tower gardens that you're growing your own produce and actually saving money, right? That's why I did it because I'm like, shoot, I need to save money. And also what I'm buying from the store is garbage. Like I go to Organic Garage in Oakville. I'm telling you guys, it's pathetic. What is, I'm like, I cannot spend 350 on that kale. I just cannot do that. I can't. So then I go, I, I look, I go to Whole Foods and then I spend a dollar more. Right? Like, but I'm willing to invest that to make sure that I'm getting what I need because I know just this past year, I have felt like I've said in my body, I felt that like it's like an inflammatory tightness because of stress. Because we all have it. Regardless, you know, we can handle it well, but we all have it because it's just it's just part of aging. It's just part of, you know, not moving as much, you know, in our day to day, maybe for some of us, it's not maybe exercising all the things, right? So, um, so I just want, let me read this too. I just want, um, you to realize that, you know, our foundation comes from what we put in our body and what we're choosing to take. So let me just share with you this. Okay. This is the, the last piece. I got to teach a yoga class actually at 12. Um, so chicken, Okay, so listen to this. We're coming to an end. Chicken, one serving of chicken, okay, has 222 milligrams of tyrosine, an amino acid. Okay, remember, we need nine amino acids. <clears throat> an endive, an endive is a vegetable, right? I don't actually buy endives. I'm like, what do I do with an endive? Although now that I'm talking about this, maybe I should try. I'll Google and find, or I'll go to DuckDuckGo and I'll find out what to do with an endive and I'll let you guys know. But this is why we want to eat endive. is because chicken has 222 milligrams of tyrosine and endive has 205 milligrams of tyrosine. Chicken has 261 milligrams of phenylalanine, phenylalanine and endive has 272, has more. Okay, so you might say, well, it doesn't have all nine amino acids, okay? But that's okay, because when we go, I'll go back to that in a second, when we go to what I posted in the group here, um, I just got this off of thriveforward.com. So when I go to, or even this here, okay, let's just say I do a chia pudding. Chia seeds, a quarter of a cup or four tablespoons, which is pretty much what I use when I do a chia pudding, maybe three tablespoons, three to four, is 12 grams of protein. You add, um, you know, you can add, um, you know, all the berries on top of that. You can add, um, you know, what else here I'm looking at here. You can add sunflower seeds, flax seeds, you know, eight grams, sunflower seeds, eight grams. You could add some, um, cashews, four grams. So when you're blending it all together, not blending, but all of it together, what happens is um, one cup of broccoli, Tara, has four grams of protein. But it, I mean, obviously not enough, but you're not eating broccoli on its own. You're eating broccoli and you might add in some, um, I don't know, let's say millet, 8.4 grams in a cup. And then you're adding some lentils, one cup of lentils, which is 18 grams. You just blend that all together and make that as a, as a salad. Um, maybe you add some pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds, when you ground them up, are great for parasites. And when it's the full moon, parasites in our body get more active. Eating pumpkin seeds, a lot of them, during the full moon actually helps to eliminate. But making sure your water intake is high and, and, and all that. So pumpkin seeds, seven grams and a quarter cup, four tablespoons. Right? So do you see what I'm saying? Like... Um, you know, it's like, let me see here. Black beans, one cup of black beans is 15 grams of, um, protein. 11 grams hemp seeds for a quarter of a cup. Three tablespoons of hemp seeds is a serving of protein. Nine grams and a cup of quinoa. So, uh, soy milk, nine grams in one cup. If you're gonna have soy milk, just make sure that it is non-GMO and organic. Very important. Now, if you can't find non-GMO, organic is typically with organic, if it's organic, it will have to be non-GMO, okay? Soy is good for you and the research proves it. 
trust me, I've had to look because I was one of those anti-soy people. Um, but I'm actually starting to consume it more because it actually is very preventative for disease. Um, you have to have the right quality though. You can't just go out and buy any soy because 97% of the soybeans, 95% of the soybeans that are um, grown are GMO. There may, means your body doesn't recognize it as a food. Um, it's called Green for Life, bro, bro, uh, Victoria Borchenko. This has been, I've had this for a long, long time. When I was teaching this stuff many years ago, it's 2005. I don't know, maybe she's most recently updated it, but. Um, and uh, a cup of broccoli has four grams. So anyways, that just kind of gives you an idea. Um, but the idea here, if you can see, I posted this in the group. See how you see that? Those are um, you making your plates. So you would do all these meal options provide 25 grams of complete protein. Okay, so the first one here is a cup of cooked quinoa, a cup of cooked broccoli, and a cup of chickpeas. That's 25 grams right there. Next one, one cup, cup of cooked brown rice, one cup of cooked lentils, one cup of spinach, 28 grams of protein. Half a cup of dry oats, two tablespoons of peanut butter, or you could do almond butter, one cup of soy milk, quarter cup of dried fruit, 26 grams of protein in that meal. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? There's, there's lots of protein. The other thing too, um, I actually, with my shred, uh, shred and Glow transformation that we're starting next week, um, for Juice Plus customers, so if you're um, doing, if you're a customer, you get the program for free. We will be doing that every other month. Um, we're looking also at, um, my colleague and I are also looking at bringing the Four Seasons Detox back for specifically Juice Plus customers. That is huge, 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 huge. Um, being a Juice Plus customer, you get a lot of perks. You're saving a lot of money, a lot of money by doing this. Um, I'm actually using, um, and many of the women in there are using the Complete Shakes. The Complete Shakes are from Juice Plus. They are, I don't have the, I, I should talk about them actually in a separate, um, separate, separate live, but it is so much whole food in there. Um, and it's good quality. It's, and there's science that research that backs it up, that it's good quality. It is soy based, but it's non GMO. And the research they've done NSF certified, the research they've done is by third party. Okay. It's not their own research. And it shows that these shakes, um, what they do in terms of weight management, what they do in terms of providing your body with nutrition and helping to detoxify. I mean, there's so much goodness in there. If you have a problem, if those of you, um, I know one person has told me in, um, that she's had a problem with those, um, or even just soy in general, it A, could be the quality, um, but also if it's good quality, like if it was this complete shake, for example, um, it's because of gut dysbiosis. It's your gut is out of whack. And so typically what we'll do is we'll start with just like a, a teaspoon in a shake or somehow, and then eating that for a few days, and then we increase. Um, because you will, if you, it's about flooding your body with nutrition, guys. It's all about, as you know, my greatest passion is helping you age well, free of chronic disease. And that's not where the general population is headed. You know that, right? We see that, right? It, you don't, we don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that. And so now is the time more than ever especially with this past year and moving forward, now is a time more than ever. We have got to take our health back. We've got to take our health into our own hands and we've got to um, really do sometimes the things that are uncomfortable, right? I, I, I'm speaking from a place of um, that's what I do, right? So anyways, ladies, I hope that was helpful. Questions, absolutely let me know. As I always say, please, um, please let me know. Questions, those of you um, question have questions about Shred, uh, I call it Shred and Glow Transformation because we're shredding bad habits and we are um, creating a glow from the inside out. And when you have a glow on the outside, it's because it's coming from the inside, but it takes time. It doesn't happen in 10 days, although it is a 10 day program. It doesn't happen in one month. It happens month after month after month of you doing um, making these changes as uncomfortable as sometimes it is but that's why you have this community because 
it's all about being surrounded with the right people and having the support. Mm. And you can ask any of my clients that are watching, that have worked with me, I support you. My greatest um, desire is that you will, um, you know, when I hear, you know, even Sherry, you can say, I know I always center you because you, you're you good at, uh, or I put you on the spot, but I mean, even the change that you've had, Sherry, um, at the doctor's office, I mean, that is amazing. This is why I do what I do. So anyways, ladies, I have to go teach in 15 minutes. So have an amazing day. Questions, let me know. And if you have more questions about Shred and Glow, please let me know. All right, you're welcome, Tara. Thanks for being on, Sherry. And uh, who else, who else? Sandra, if you're still here, and Tina. Okay, ladies, talk to you later. Bye.